it's important to recognize that um, discussions on heterosexuality, homosexuality, transsexuality, um, all of these discussions can take place within a feminist construct, right? So that in discussing feminism, we're not always just talking exclusively about women and women's rights and women's needs and so on. What I hope more than anything you were able to learn in uh, this video lecture is that feminism um, is far more complicated, um, has far more breadth, um, can reach and apply to far more um, disparate groups than simply uh, a population of marginalized women, right? Feminist theory uh, can be applied um, uh, in organizational conflicts, can be applied in discussions of um, transsexualism, can be applied in discussions of uh, freedom and emancipation. Um, and hopefully what you were able to gain from this discussion is the importance of understanding feminist theory um, and understanding that at the heart of this um, ideology, at the heart of this movement, feminism is, that is, is a sense of recognition, right, uh, freedom, uh, and in discussing freedom, um, a recognition of defining the individual in terms of what she or he is, right, not in terms of what he or she lacks. Um, in the examples of attempting to define the woman in terms of her negation, of attempting to uh, describe her power as being only indirectly useful rather than directly useful. Hopefully all of these things have opened uh, your eyes to a new uh, and hopefully reinvigorated uh, interest in looking at um, feminist theory. And uh, it was my intention today to uh, do just that. Uh, with that said, uh, this concludes my discussion on feminism. As I said, it was a very, very brief introduction to feminist theory um, and also a brief uh, explanation of how it applies to other fields of thought and other disciplines outside of traditional um, feminism. Uh, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. I appreciate you taking the time watching my video. Thank you and have a good day.